Uh, is this how we're starting? Is this is this is this happening? Are we <sighs> yeah. are we podcasting? What's happening? I mean, I I guess so. I guess so. We have to find out our stride. We do. Uh, I was I was extremely like I think our first episode without Jake was all right. All right, indeed. Different. So and this all is, right. Yeah, this is our sophomore attempt, and hope and I don't know. There might be some bumps on the road, but uh, we're still here. We're still podcasting. We're still hanging out, hanging out, yep. hanging out with the family, having um, ourselves a party. Yeah, we haven't figured out what what we're gonna do. Still, this is still another in in betweener episode because um, Phil is moving, moving, moving away from the cheese house. The cheese house, yes. The cheese house is no more. It is. I was at the cheese house today. Actually, it's all empty. You were at the cheese house, and, the, and you said you goodbye to the cheese house. This is the last time you'll see the cheese house. Yeah, pretty much. Goodbye. Last time I see the cheese Goodbye, house. cheese house, and your terrible internet and your stupid shower. That is a time machine. The shower was great. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> well, the living room was nice uh, with the view, but um, great living room with the view. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to. I mean, I don't know who is interested in my moving life, but like when I was in the cheese house, honestly, like the the thing that I never. I'm just gonna bring this one just this once just okay. mention this once for podcast i don't think anyone else is interested in other stuff uh do you remember the days of phil and jake in conversation and where i always complained about oh no it's getting warmer mm-hmm. you know like you remember uh, like kind of like you guys yeah, lived like, in the, the the library dungeon up, up up in the we lived in the library dungeon yeah yes. um and it's mostly like wood and it wasn't insulated so if it got hot it got hot you know, we're toasting in personal there. sauna of you two guys in there. Uh, and you know, we, we 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 went. Yeah, we went for a giant fan to cool the room mm-hmm. that ran its course, and then we just upgraded to a portable air conditioner, mm-hmm. and that kept us alive for a bit. But it was still uncomfortable. Um, at some point, Tim, when we did twofold, uh huh, two like what was it? Two summers went by, and you didn't hear me complaining about summer ever. Yeah, yeah, no, it was great. No, you know why? Because the cheese house, incredibly underrated natural insulation. Well, you had the, your your landlord above you, probably chilling chilling his place, and you got no, to- no. It was it's it's just like because it's against the hill. Mm-hmm. It's surrounded by trees, and every time I go inside, I'm like, wow, it's cool in here. You know, it's like a castle. You know, when you go inside a castle <laughs> ruin, <laughs> so it's so like it very cold. The, yeah, 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 and so. Honestly, every summer, I just took it for granted. They just passed me by. It was pleasant. I could go outside whenever I wanted to and, Mm -hmm. you know, bask in the heat and the sun, take a nice walk. And I knew that when I got back, everything would be fine. I'd be in a cool environment, airy environment, and summer would just pass me by. Awesome. Controllable, wonderful. Well, that time has come to an end because I'm getting stuffy again oh, and no. I'm hating it. Oh, no. Yep. Well, that's it's the... bad. <laughs> do you have air I'm gonna ha- I'm, it, uh, I do, and it's a crappy portable air conditioner. Ah, all right, all right. So it's going to be an interesting summer. The, the internet, well, the good thing is the internet <laughs> speeds are back. It's just the... Yeah, the you know what? Internet speed's fine. And uh, yeah, uh, moving uh, made me learn a lot of things and I'm glad I learned them. Good, good. A new change, a new chapter, a new chapter of the podcast and a new chapter of Phil's life. Out of the cheese, out yeah. of the cold, out of the crappy internet, into the hot and the good internet. Yeah, into the hot and the good and in- <laughs> the hot and the good internet. The hot and, and the hot. Um, yeah, but it's also, it's. I think for me, it's going to be, from now on, uh, I, I guess we're starting this podcast like that. Um, Probably, yeah. This, this, with, this, with, yeah. with me. <laughs> with you talking about your move. It's a, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a thing. I mean, look, I think we've always done stuff like that on our podcast. Yeah, we so do. I don't think this is very different. I think um, it's a big thing. I think it's a big milestone, you know. Yeah, it's a good it's way first, to start. First time I did it. First time I did it on my own because every time I would move it was be it would be with family, mm-hmm. right? Um so lots of lots of stress, uh lots of and also the fact that I was moving not not just my things but my parents' things as well and I had to know what to do with it. Thankfully yeah. that is all managed. So that's great. And I learned that time to downsize is going to be an interesting couple of an interesting time for me to go through all this stuff and say, listen, I don't need this. I don't need this. I'm going to just <laughs> donate it, sell it, or throw it away. 
So it's going to be good. I think this is all to the good. And also, I think, I also feel like it's a, it's a thing where I noticed looking back in the cheese house mm-hmm. that, sure, I had my anxieties over the landlord and everything. But <laughs> that's an over, that's a, what is it? That's an understatement? Understatement? Yeah, that's an yeah. understatement. But yeah, go ahead. But um, even with that, I learned just a few days now, like once I'm gone from there, that I did not have motivation or drive to do a lot. I just kind of sank into the malaise of comfort, mm-hmm. you know, because I had the castle comfort of the cheese house. The castle, co- yeah, the castle comfort, you know, like not not. I was not just isolated physically because I was up on a hill. So every time I would think of. I can't go out unless I really make an effort to say I'm going to have to travel 20 minutes down the hill to get to the nearest bus or the nearest <laughs> the little mini bus store. You have to travel. <laughs> yeah, the, I love the mini bus, so cute. And well, that that kind of through time it just isolates you a mm-hmm. little bit, you know, because you you can't just on a whim go boom out, right? Yeah. And uh, mentally and probably emotionally, I just kind of felt isolated in a way where, not necessarily socially, but just, I have everything I need here. I can do my things without disturbance, you know? So I didn't have a drive, you know? I just kind of kept doing the things I do, made enough money, got to be able to pay the rent, and I kept living, you know? King of the but cheese castle, life? that's what you were. You, you were yeah, but what... But what kind of life was it, Tim, if I would just be passing through the years and no change <laughs> happening? No I'll motivation to continue? Yeah, so... And without going into detail, now that I moved out and I learned a lot of things, I learned a lot of things about myself, too. Okay. Uh, there's definitely going to be a new wave of change going on with me. So Good. this isn't the end of the tale. Good. I think this is this tale is going to be more interesting from now on. Good, and I hope you bring you bring you bring the new tale into the into the podcast to the twofold podcast. <laughs> twofold podcast. All right, yeah. let's let's, let's, let's get on with so. the show. Uh, did Johnny? I think he's he stopped being sad. I think I seen him like he's without, over it. Yeah, he's over I, it now. I, he doesn't have like red eyes coming in the office. We did you did you tell Johnny about about my new nephew and our co-host's new son? I was gonna leave it for the end, but uh, before oh before okay we, we can cut it out, Tim. We can no, cut no, it no, out. it's we fine. It's completely fine. Before we uh, play the song, uh, a, a little cheer to our ex-co-host Jacob for becoming a father, for he has a son. Hooray! Hooray! Cheers! Cheers! Yes, that's what that's what cheered up Johnny. He's like, no. I was so happy. I was moving out with a friend of mine, like moving all my parents' stuff to a storage facility somewhere, and. While we were doing that, the baby was born. A baby was born. In the midst of fire and flame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the baby was born while Phil was moving. So uh, it's tears to Jake and Paula and the new son. And uh, Absolutely. we drink to his health. I'm drinking a cider. I don't, <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Cheers. But man... Cheers. Cheers. I, I'm I'm actually quite I'm very happy. I'm very I'm I'm just very happy about this, you know. You're an right. uncle. An uncle. I am a real and I'm an official uncle now. I'm an actual uncle. You know what's funny? Incredible. That um you became a brother in the same month I became an uncle. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> interesting interesting tale yep. interesting it took family you, tree it took you 26 years to catch up <laughs> you have a 20 yep. 26 head years head start i've yeah, been an uncle true. for 26 years well Joe, i don't have welcome any siblings to the club that are 20 years older than me. <laughs> that's true <laughs> welcome to the club we're both thank you thank you i i can't wait to you know see this child grow up and Turn into a like a, an actual you know, <laughs> human. human being. It's already. Uh, you know what I mean. I know. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. Um, so yeah. So this this is the, the official podcast of Uncle Tim and Uncle Phil. Now, um, um, that's right. <laughs> the two uncles uh, join yeah. us. That's true. All right. Uh, it's um, 
What was I going to say? Was, there was something I wanted to mention as well. That What did you want to mention? Was that cropped up. I don't know. We talked about you sure. moving, Jake having a child. Uh, Whew, there was something that like was on, it was in my mind until we started talking about Jake having a, oh. you know, being a father. I don't know. Well, we I have a movie today. I can't remember. We do. And uh, coincidentally, it does kind of connect to family it's true. relationships. So I think we, we were... <laughs> Good happenstance once again on Twofold Podcast. Twofold Ain't that great. Podcast. Ain't that great, Tim? But Tim, like before we before we talk about it, like is there anything else that's new? Do you? Do you oh no, that's what I wanted to say. What? I wanted to say. So when I moved in this room that I'm in right now, uh-huh. it was echoey as sin. You know what I mean? Oh yes. <laughs> and I was and I was wondering. Now this was to me the biggest challenge, like the the proving grounds for these <laughs> wonderful audio. You know those audio foam. Yes. Uh, tiles that I bought two years ago. This was the the, the test to see if it's actually possible. You if know? they can handle so I just it. slap them. Yep, I just slap them all around the room. I still have a couple left over. I just ran out of tape, but I slap them all on on the room. Mm-hmm. And listen to this. You sounds don't good. hear a difference. It sounds exactly the same. I'm Echo Boy still, though. Unfortunately, I do not. Yeah, this is this room I'm in. Uh, it's my uh, office right now, but soon. Within a couple of weeks, it's going to be my daughter's room. So yeah. I didn't slap anything on the walls. I just have pillows right now around me just to just suck suck up the sound a little bit. It's not working yeah, really much, bit. but just a tiny little yeah. bit. But uh, we'll see. Maybe when I move to the other room, maybe it's going to be better there. Maybe it's going to be a little bit more professional. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It'll be cool. It'll, it'll be amazing because like, you know, when me and Jake did Phil and Jake in conversation mm-hmm. and our, what was it called? Our uh, roof dungeon. Oh, yeah. Library dungeon. Yeah. The like, sauna. Our library dungeon was just naturally um, def- like dampened, yeah. you know, like because it had all that wood and all those uh, shelves and books. And then it also had like a lot of um, like mattresses on different corners and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it just naturally made a great sounding like environment to record. And it was not on purpose. We just lucked out with it so me and jake were always in pretty good quality all throughout the years you guys also when we did matrix started with what? using uh you saw at the beginning you used like um dynamic mics those also cancel out a lot of the noise as opposed oh, to really? like a, the, the sure mics okay the, what did i say a dynamic mics yeah as opposed to like a condenser mic that one picks up a lot of the room do you think so? I yeah, think yeah. that the, I thought I thought the condensers are the ones that you have to get close to because I'm using a condenser now, and it, you have to get close to to get a, ra- uh, a, a proper. But I have a wider um, kind of uh, funnel of sound, so it's so it's taking a lot of the sound around you while the dynamic mic is really concentrated onto like a single point. So if you put your mouth on that single point, it's just picking up your mouth and all the. You know the other reverberance from the room is just not picked up by the mic. That's that's my impression of it. But yeah, that's why I like they the say even if you have an echo room, like you pick up a dynamic mic, like a SM57 or something like that, it's much better. And and like for a home studio instead of like a condenser I, mic, I, which was much suited better for like a nice and treated studio. All right. Well, <laughs> you might be the expert. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, this is this is my impression. So let, let it, you know if you know better, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> They're listening. Yeah, but I wanted to say I wanted to say that we're coming in full circle where it was me and Jake in conversation, mm-hmm. and now it's going to be Tim and Phil in conversation, yes. and soon we will both be on equal quality. So it's like a complete circle. It's true. Yeah, complete yeah. Complete circle. What happens I then? We don't know. <laughs> the apocalypse. <laughs> the apocalypse. What happens happen. when the, the moon will collide complete. to the earth? Yep, that's, that's, that's exactly uh, what happened. That's what it is. All right. Well, do you want to talk about our movie today? Yeah. Do you want to talk about our movie today? Yeah, let's talk about our movie. Let's let's talk about how we got to the movie. Um, it wasn't like <laughs> picked like um, let's watch this movie. I actually just watched this movie, <laughs> yeah, like a week ago with my wife. As you do. We were like, oh, let's see what's on Netflix. I was like, I I saw this. Like I saw. I think a few artists I follow on Instagram. They worked on this uh, movie, so I saw like posters and some art, and I was like, "I don't know what this is. This looks interesting." And I saw, oh, I saw, you know, Phil Lord and the other folks. What's his other Chris oh, Miller? Chris Miller, and I was like, "Hey, these guys, you know, know their cartoon stuff. Let's watch this." 
So we watched it, and then it came to podcast. And like, Phil, hey, I watched this movie. You want to maybe watch it? And you did. And I did. I did. Just like just put 40 it on. minutes ago. Oh, oh, okay. I watched it like a week ago. So we're going to have different... Uh, yeah. Different... Uh, yeah. Um, what is that? What would that be? I guess different memories of mine. Nowadays. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Um, I found out about this movie the same as you, actually. Oh, really? I have like... I follow, I follow different artists on Twitter. Um and they've been like people have been posting about it and i had no idea what this was and i feel like tim am i getting old or like cuz i'm really not keeping track of what movies are coming out i talked about this last episode <laughs> like zombie not zombie land army of the dead i had no idea it was like a finished complete film directed by zack snyder you know what i mean hmm. no idea I don't in the past, like in the past, like in the past, like like, pr- like I think it was like pre twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I would always know about something coming out. How did you know I about it? After, like, what did you follow? Like, where where, where does your source of information come from? Well, there is. There's obviously Reddit, which mm-hmm. sometimes talks about new things that are happening. If you go on the subreddit R movies, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then there's Twitter, where people just start talking about an upcoming movie. Mm-hmm. Um, there is. Uh, Maybe sometimes there would be like on IMDb, you know, you'd have like on the side, there'd be like movie news. Right. Maybe there, it would be some kind of natural way of me being aware of a movie coming out. You know, like I never even saw um, the uh, Greg is it? No, what's his name? Greg <laughs> Kabazinski? No, wait, no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, that's all right. Who Krasinski, is? Krasinski, the Krasinski directed um, Don't get loud oh silent quiet quiet town i don't remember uh, what it's called. be quiet <laughs> no what be is it quiet, quiet. No, what is it called uh, silence no that's no that's the, that's the a quiet place part two are you, are you, martin, martin scorsese are you talking about that um, no are you talking about yes a quiet, quiet place? place yes I, I said like i i knew well in Not advance Greg, that john krasinski John Krasinski was directing a movie and it yes. was A Quiet Place. I remember yes. way back like in 2017, 2016 or something that he was making it. But like I never even saw the movie. Oh, you didn't I still see it? didn't. No. Um but I would be aware, you know. I remember all these movies that were just about coming out and I would know that they were coming like mm-hmm. what was Green Room? That's what it's called, right? Green Room, you the mean- one with Patrick Stewart. Yes, yes, yes. So it's like all these like every every kind of movie wouldn't be a surprise to me when it would show up um but like it seems like right after like 2019 or something um maybe it's because of the pandemic that also because streaming that things are just showing up and i can't keep up i can't keep up i can't can't catch up up. i guess there's a lot less marketing because it's not in the cinemas like like netflix doesn't do a lot like netflix is really bad at like hyping up stuff like thing just comes out like if you don't if you miss it like you miss it on like like you said like most of the times i will be aware of a movie if it's on like reddit that's usually like on twitter i don't really do anything on twitter instagram sometimes like this you know coincidentally somebody's talking about a movie like an artist if they worked on it but it's really that like imdb is just full of spam (laughs) and ads i really don't i I can't really unless i'm looking for a movie i'm not really getting any information there so it has to be on our movies and i see if there's a buzz around something that's coming out either came out i'm usually aware of it and then when we do like since we started like from last year especially covid times and everything's on vod i would do like okay let's see what's coming out this month and i would do like a search and honestly there's no one place where we would tell you i would actually usually go through like 10 to 15 google like uh, links to read an article mm. or something like that that gives me like an idea of what's happening because like like you said especially netflix stuff it's really hidden unless yeah there's a buzz around it it came out and like lots of people love it like let's say stranger things or whatever it is oh yeah, yeah or like yeah, the yeah. the witcher like usually you don't it just doesn't you know they leak just through. Appear yeah out of thin hair and i don't know to me it just kind of in my opinion maybe i'm old-fashioned mm-hmm. but it feels a little cheap it feels a little cheap what do you mean feels a little cheap? Like the presentation of like the existence of the film feels cheap. I guess. I guess. I never really like, you know, lived in the whole, like I know back when we used to do movies, like, you know, you, you love the, the the posters and the trailers and the... Oh, yeah. That's that's part of the experience. Love it. Okay. Yeah. 
I guess it's like I, it's, I love a good trailer that doesn't reveal much, but kind of gets you hyped. But but beyond that, it's like I really don't care. <laughs> Besides yeah, the, movie. are you looking? Okay, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. I'm not really uh, a poster guy. <laughs> I'm not a poster guy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Are you looking forward to like the Green Knight? Yeah, Green Knight. There's a that, bunch of stuff. That's a movie that's been delayed forever. I want to watch it. I, I think we need to do a podcast about that when it comes out. There's like a sleuth of, of, of movies that were delayed from last year. They're all kind of kind of cramped, I think, from like September to December. There's, you know, obviously um, a, a Wes Anderson movie, The French Connection. Not The French Connection. The <gasps> French Dispatch. Dude. Okay, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the French Connection. Um, there's, uh, you know, Dune coming out. Yeah, dude. Uh, there's Matrix, obviously, for the Matrix Minute podcast. I We're can't gonna... wait. It's there's been some news that uh, Christina Ricci's been. Uh, I saw that. It's so. At random. least I'm aware of this. Yeah, but yeah, she yeah. worked with them on uh, what Jupiter Ascending. No, that was whoops. No, that's... <laughs> that was Mila Kunis. Yeah, I'm, yeah. My bad. Um, so I have no, that's going to be an interesting. So there's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, A24 is sitting on a bunch of things. Um, yeah, so, so I, I, it's going to be interesting, uh, autumn. I can't wait. Uh, I honestly, me too. I can't wait for the summer to be over. And now you know why. Exactly. Cause it's going to be evil and hot. So let's talk about, um, yes, let's do it. Animated films. I chose this. I ch- like Tim, you watched like yeah. a bunch of, you gave me like three selections of films and I was like, I want to watch the animated film because animation, in my opinion, still does not get the respect it deserves. Hmm. You don't think so? I think the public the still public feels or like, like anim- the awards, or both. I uh, I just I think like just people's perception of animation is still a little bit like, oh, it's for kids, you know. Oh, that's still um, really that's weird. It's a whole different topic. After but, like yeah. the anime explosion, you know, since the eighties into the West world and the nineties and two thousands, I still can't believe that in the West people still think animation is for children. It's like, you know, if you look at like, you know, all the stuff like from Akira and everything that's, that's kind of, you know, happened in, in Japan with like animation for adults. I can't believe we still don't have good animation for adults, especially like European stuff, you know, the seventies French science fiction animation. Yeah, We're yeah. still like, Oh, it has to be for family or for kids. Can we get like, or it doesn't make money, I guess, you know. It doesn't. I mean, it's, it's also, like, did you, did you watch um, Love, Death, Robots on Netflix? I was going to mention that one. I didn't see it, but I know what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, season two about. is it's not as strong as first one, but it's like, I want stuff like that. I want animation for adults. I want animation for adults, too. Like, that I one's a, that... a little bit extreme because it's, like, for adults, so there's, like, sex and yeah, blood yeah, yeah. and so violence. Yeah, yeah, so they're, like, so like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like blood. But it's, like, it yeah. could be anything, man. It doesn't it just use yeah. animation as a, yeah, definitely. But this yeah. is a family movie. So, <laughs> but this is, a, this is definitely a family film. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is uh, Sony Pictures, Sony Animations, uh, The Mitchells versus The Machines. Exactly. Right? That's what it's called. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim um, versus The machine yeah 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 pretty much um well how can we start talking about this film well what did you tell us um what this movie is, is about and try to tr- let's, let's, oh, are you kidding me yeah, okay you're asking you want me, to do me it? for the synopsis how about how about this the two the twofold podcast how about i become synopsis king can you be synopsis king i mean maybe someday i'll do a synopsis but i have to write it down okay so i you, didn't so i'll do synopsis on Unless you say synapses. synapses, unless you say, "Hey, I want to do synapses." Okay, how does that okay, sound? Cool. Okay, that's great. So right the- around the carpool tunnel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I love that we have our own little lore, and the only way you can get it is if you listen to the Matrix podcast, and then you listen to our old podcast, and then you just yeah, then you get it. I, I'm not. We're not asking you to. And mostly, it's just flubs. Really, honestly, it's just a can't. Like it, it goes all the way to. You know, Guilt of Del Toro. It's just, it's, it's, it's so good. Flubs so good. all the way down. Okay. So Go. the Mitchells versus the machine. So if I remember correctly, it's about a family. Our main protagonist is the daughter. She has a, a younger brother and a father and a mother, and they have a weird looking pug. She doesn't really feel like she belongs in this town. Her dad doesn't understand her artistic interests, and she can wait to go to college. She's finishing high school into California. She's going to art school, to movie school, to meet her people. But, you know, her dad wants to reconnect with her. 
as she's leaving because doesn't want to end things badly. So he suggests that they go on a road trip to California instead of her flying. But meanwhile, an evil corporation, a mix of Google, Apple, and uh, and Amazon, I would assume. Um, cre- that dude reviewing uh, Apple products. Exactly. Well. And they create a new robot. It's supposed to be an assistant. But hurrah, hurrah, that becomes evil because he abandons his old assistant uh, on this phone which then is the dictator who controls all these robots so they want to take over the world which it coincide with them traveling so they're on this 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 you know this adventure travel uh to yes. california as the world is ending and the family has to you know overcome their differences talk it through and and save to, the day in the end to save the day yes to to put the kill switch into effect yeah which they discover yeah can be done very easily. Yeah, they, they found the out these robots have a kill switch, so they have to go. F- they tried a few things, try to run it in an Apple Store or whatever this company was called, I forgot. Or at the end. Pal? Yeah, pal, pal.com or <laughs> paypal.com. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't work out, so they have to go to the mainframe, to the main computer, the main headquarters in, in Silicon Valley. Which is which is the old app that was, jealo- that was sad that the yeah. CEO dumped... Yeah, dumped the old app. Yeah, and it's in, yeah. in favor of these new robots. So they, they, and then they have to overcome their differences. They have to work as a family, understand each other, come together, and save the day. Which spoilers? They do. They do because <laughs> it's a family movie. Yeah. And um, yep, and they learn something on the way. You know about about themselves. Yes. So, so that's that's. Thank you for your help, Phil. There, um, it's good. You're to welcome. Stuff. My my help was absolutely necessary. I, there, I think we got. Excellent. I think we we we. If if not, um, yeah. So if Jacob's listening to this and I'm he sorry. doesn't understand, hopefully he does. I hope I, this was pretty. It's good. I don't remember. I can't think of any beats you didn't mention. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this podcast. We do it as not a review of a movie, but as a conversation at a boot about a movie yeah and the yeah. assumption from our part is one yep a you've seen it so you know about it or second yep. you don't care about the movie and you just want to listen to us talk therefore you don't care That's about right. the spoilers so really we're not trying to get you to listen to us and then decide hey am i gonna go watch this movie maybe you will i wouldn't recommend that because we spoil everything pretty much so i don't know that, that's just a i guess Bye. Right? I don't know. I don't. I don't know either. What do you think, I don't Phil? Know. about the subject. I think. I think you're right. Exactly. I. I want to be free with my conversation about. This yeah. Film and just off shooting wherever we take it with what we watched. Yeah, it's so, just a conversation this film, between friends. Really. <laughs> yeah. Go between ahead, sorry. friends. <laughs> friends. Okay. So this film. So let's talk about the the biggest thing that I enjoyed, and I think you would come on. You can guess what I enjoyed the most about it. Oh, I guess the animation. Yeah, the style. I love how it looked. It was wonderful. All the backgrounds were, they looked very hand-painted, but I don't know if they are or not. And also the characters, they looked like, they had like, this was like a development from Spider-Verse, because it's the same, yes. I don't know if it's the same production company, but it is yeah. Sony Pictures Animation. So I think I it is, because, I mean, own, it's the same producers, yeah. it's just different uh, directors and writers. Um, yeah. But um, yes, same production house, probably probably same thing. I think they even mentioned when I was reading about it that it is the same um, technique as far as like, you know, what they used as far as software. Yeah, same it's so Spider-verse. nice. It's like 3D. It's still very much CG, but the filters on it make it feel like, you know, like it's like a hybrid of seeing like sketchy 2D imagery, but with uh, that CG three-dimensionality you know like you have stuff realistic lighting you know realistic for yeah. animated movies like this but you can see outlines of like when someone's hands are showing and you can see the outlines of the hands you know what i mean which is so refreshing like, as if it was drawn yeah yes because like absolutely. pixar has been pushing this like hyper realistic be yet cartoony which is great you know but it isn't the only way you know to use cgi because like Phil Lord and I, forget, I keep forgetting Chris Miller. Chris Miller. I mean, they done this with Lego Movie, which was amazing. That, that oh, quasi yeah. stop uh, motion animation, which just blew my mind. Which is the most amazing movies of the last ten years. And then there's also with the Spider Verse, that was all like crazy as far as the so use. cool. So yeah. and they've done it here as well, and I think it fits. I think it it adds 
so much character to to the uh to the movie and here's yeah. my question what did you think so there's a there's part of like the visuals of this is is this what you're talking about this kind of hand drawn cgi yeah chalky hand drawn cgi look yeah, yeah. Uh, and there was also a 2d layer which is kind of tied with the character of our main protagonist she likes to make these quirky movies where a lots of like yeah, gifs yeah. and like cgi like said like over the top 2d graphics pop up and that was also used for the movie what, what did you think of that well um there's a thing that i was noticing and there was a lot of that in spider-verse as well mm -hmm. so it's not particularly unique with this movie yeah as much but like it it, it's some it's it's still new it's still not something i'm accustomed to in these kinds of movies so i <laughs> yeah. loved it breaking <laughs> you know what i mean it's breaking that for the funny thing i was i was reading about this like yeah go ahead yeah because there was like you know there are moments where some kind of uh like an epiphany is made and it's like we're gonna go to the you know we're gonna go to the global mall and then it's like then it just becomes like a little quick overlay of some kind of like a uh, very rough hand-drawn something and there's like a you know like a guitar riff or something yeah. there's a lot of that kind of interjections in there which were very which were very fun and i like them i like them it's very interesting because i was reading like what people said online and somebody get a great uh summary it said uh, it's it's basically goofy movie for zoomers ha <laughs> 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 yeah you're right yeah and it was like <laughs> i was like yeah that makes sense i mean the story wise you know like father and uh, child connecting there's a road yeah, trip you yeah. know a forced road trip so it's very similar that way but you know for zoomers i think because i was watching this with my wife and she said like she couldn't kind of get over those what i was asking about those 2d kind of when the story is happening and there's a certain visuals and then kind of like the fourth wall is broken and all of a sudden you have like these edits of things jumping and she's like, like little 2d stickers floating yeah. around she's like i couldn't get over it like it was too interrupting and i said like really i think i said like it like you know like this is <laughs> based on that quote it's it's for like zoomers which is funny to think about like you know we got into you know we're like late teens in our 20s as, as millennials going into like internet like internet poop and memes and yeah all this kind of <laughs> internet <videos>. poop <laughs> like this all this yeah, kind of abstract yeah. and absurdist uh internet humor and just just a, kind of like the onslaught of being like you know the next evolution of mtv you know like when we're kids people are like this is mtv editing you know like it's everything is too fast like the next yeah, layer yeah, was like yeah. youtube where everything is just like you know turned up and i was like well this is what kids grew up the, the kids are watching this like so when they true. were like so true seven or eight they went to youtube and they saw this so to them it's like super well, it's like, normal it's like yeah it's like the character that was you know our main character i forget her name i'm sorry i really hate when i forget character names, uh, but you you're, you're fresher than me but i'm fresher that yeah, but i will tell like, you the main she character was a kid. is called uh katie Katie, she was a kid when, you know, my uh, he, exactly. my, uh, ha, my, uh, ha, ha, that came out and that was like in their home videos. Remember, that was like a whole thing in the yes. movie where it's like, that's a bonding moment with it, with her dad. That's a bonding mo that, moment with her dad. That's like, you know, that's, uh, you were asking today, Tim, am I old? Yes, and for you're me, old. <laughs> it's true. Old. Yeah. I was in high school when that showed up. Yeah. I, I was actually like done with high school when that showed up. Yep. So, Remember that fat guy? That was so funny. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like dancing, eating cereal. See, those are, those are the first internet. And this is what the kids grew up in. So so this is, you know, that's part of part of the charm. Like to us, it may be still sometimes a little bit abrupt, but other than that, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like that's just how the media was is consumed uh, now, you know. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a style, you know. I, I I'm completely okay with it. I think I, I was personally a little bit bothered, like it was a too interrupting at the beginning, and then I was just like completely okay with it. I, I I got ah, so you're 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 feeling it. You're feeling the I am old syndrome. Yeah, I, I think so. But then I kind of just pictured it in the context, and I, I wasn't really bothered. Yeah, I did. You know, see a lot of YouTube poop in my life, so I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So it's okay to me. I think I've seen different style. This is more family friendly style, so it's, it's a different flavor. Sure. But in the end, I think it's pretty cool. Um, what about? Is there anything that you think? Oh, go on, go on. You would know what did you want to ask? Is there anything that you felt was probably getting? I might be just a little bit presumptuous by saying this, but things were getting a little bit because I've seen this in Spider Verse. You know, I've seen this kind of humor in Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in Lego Movie. Okay. 
don't get me wrong, it's new, it's fresh. It's not something I've seen in movies. <laughs> it's the hip with the kids. But it's getting but it's getting kind of old now, don't you? Like I feel like that, you know, like um like when like when they're all screaming and they're like they were tossed by a robot out the window and they're falling down from like a big height. The entire family's there going, ah and then it freeze frames and then you know, Katie as a narrator is like, Oh, this this is this is terrible. Maybe it'll be better with filters. And then there's cat filters gotcha, yeah. going on. And she goes, eh, not so bad. And still not great. And then it continues. Ah, and then they fall down. Um, it's funny. And I think I laughed a lot more back when I watched Lego Movie. With yeah. that kind of a, it wasn't like that same thing, but like, uh, I know what you I mean. I get the joke now. I know what know? you mean. It, it does feel like this is what I was pondering in my mind is it felt like, is this, hey, fellow kids, or is it, is it genuine? Like, Will okay, so I am as 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 an older person as a thirty year old. I'm yeah, watching it yeah. first. I'm like, this is a bit too much for me. And then exactly what you're saying, thinking, is this like corporate world not getting young children and is trying to <laughs> appease and they're missing it? But the thing is, like, the I don't think they're missing it. I don't. That's the thing. But what I'm really wondering is it is it funny to let's say kids and teenagers right now, or is it like ah oh, they don't get it? This is like this is cheesy. This is like. Um, Honestly, awkward. I have no idea. I have no idea and we what won't the know. kids pay attention to these And days. we won't know because... Ask your brother. Ask Stan <laughs> how... <laughs> his he kids are grown know, up. Probably. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like... Yeah. The Hanka Hunka's like what? 1920s? Hanka. Hanka. <laughs> Hanka. Um, Hanka. He's, he's grown up. No, but Hugo. Hugo. I don't know. We'll have to check because, again, you know, uh, I don't know who's typing up on r slash movies on Reddit. I don't know if that's a child or... Oh, or, you're right. Or a grown up. Those ad. bumbling children. I don't know who, who is can't it. can't tell anymore. So I don't know. And it's on Netflix. So I don't have any box office. You know, did it make a lot of money? Did it not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't... I don't know. So we'll never know if you're a child. I'm upset. I don't know. I, I have no idea what the what they... Reception, yeah. Yeah, I don't know the reception, but I'm just thinking just as a storytelling device, I just felt like mm. I've seen it three or four times before in uh, recent films, and I feel like there's probably a way to do something new as well. But, you know, this isn't even a criticism. I'm no, just no, observing. but I think it's general it's style. Good. Like good. I loved it. You know, back in, I think, the first animated movie... Shrek? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no the, these guys made was uh, uh, Rainy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yes, I was gonna. I was gonna mention that actually. I was gonna go back to rainy with the cloudy with a chance. Of <laughs> yeah, cloudy with a chance of me. Tim, but... truly, you are truly. I am uh, flubbing have hard. Approximate today. knowledge of many things. <laughs> that's, that's my spirit animal. That's how I. I just we played a completely completely aside, but we played this. We bought this uh, board game. It's called like oh, yeah? DPC, which means like guess, and I love it because it's a trivia game, but you don't actually guess the. Um, accurate answer, you kind of guess it because it's always like a number. So let's say it says, how tall oh, is the Eiffel Tower? And everyone writes on on this little board what they think the length is and the closest one wins, right? Dude, I I bet you like, you're like a king in no, that this is No, this is the irony part. I was, like, I was like, you know, I, I know everything, but like completely like, you know, exactly. I just have approximate knowledge <laughs> of approximate everything. Knowledge. I don't remember exact things. I just know of it. It's a disaster for this game. I sucked so hard. Oh, no. It was just like my, like I always made a educated guess, which was completely wrong to people just like randomly guess. Oh no. <laughs> no. It was amazing. I was like, I, no. yes, I know this. I know this. And I write it down and it's completely wrong. <laughs> so the Dude. curse, so my curse is strong. But oh, anyway. I'm disappointed. Uh, what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I, uh, yeah, that that's where it came from. That's what I wanted to say. That's the kind of... I, like, when I watched it for the first time, yeah. I was just like, that is hilarious. That was know? great. And it has heart, you know? It has heart, and it's funny, and it's, you know, bouncy, and it's it's different. It's it's not Disney. It's not Pixar. Oh, it's yeah. It's not DreamWorks. It was new. It was new. It was great. I, and I, this is... Yeah. <laughs> This is very similar to it. Um, I, I look. I loved a lot of this movie. Mm-hmm. I, I really did. I, I really liked it. Um, I got, I got emotional at parts, but then again, 
I don't know. I think I'm turning into Kevin Smith. <laughs> just emotional everything. anything that moves on a screen. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, that's probably what's going to happen to me soon. <laughs> just going to start <laughs> I'm sobbing. Just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, it's like with the dad and the girl. And it was just, it was just like, man. What did you think of heart. the... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. I, that's my, my heart. <laughs> that's where we're stuck. What did you think of the like the plot and overall, like just a story? A story like we talked about the animation. We both agreed that it's great. And both movies should be doing this instead of just doing. Oh, the- and also the visual, like the style, the character design. Oh yes, the character that. design was un- actually unique. I haven't really. I like the design of the dad. He was like, it was like the the. You could put him anywhere. Like. um I like that he was timeless <laughs> as a dad. You could, timeless. You could he could be a timeless. '70s dad, an '80s dad, a '90s dad. You could like that. Dad could be anywhere basically, and it, it still worked. But it also felt like fresh. Like you felt like it was it was he was you know all this time as well. So that was pretty cool. I loved I loved their like the eyes. Like they have like big eyes, but they have very small pupils. That's mm. something that you know reminds me of Bob's Burgers, which <gasps> it was I very seen. Bob's Burgery actually. Yeah, and um, there was a lot of um, there was a there was a it was a very nice design to have seen on a, as a CG thing because man, aren't you sick of the Pixar, the like the Disney CG look? Ah, like dude, it's just even it's it's. I was thinking about this the other, and I just about the look, and I was just thinking of I was being old, and just you see, you, you like remember like long time ago i don't know this is, isn't it like experience like we i guess yeah, experience. yeah yeah we're not old yeah we're just experienced a little bit like we're not i think, we're I think not. if we were old <laughs> if we were old we would say that we don't like all this stupid humor I don't going know. on i hope i'm gonna be better at that I, like maybe in the future maybe in the future then we can say oh we're old because yes. we just don't get if we're so funny, 70 and recording I'm, potless yeah. like that yes we can say we're <laughs> old now we're just say we're a little bit more experienced <laughs> than when we were at, at, but i remember like saying like yeah. You know, like you're watching Pixar, you're watching, you're watching Finding Nemo, you're watching Wally, you're watching these up and you're watching these, and you go like, and I was, I specifically remember saying, how could, you know, Pixar make anything bad? It's impossible. And uh, I think I've done this a few times in my life and, and you realize after a while, it just, it's nothing's, nothing's forever at one point. Yeah. You know, it's like a hard drive failure. It's yeah. going to, it's going to die. You know, eventually. MCU is going to suck at one point really bad. Um, DC movies are going to get good at one point. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's inevitable. They did. Joker. Joker's pretty good. I guess, I guess it's, 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 <laughs> it's still a hit of a miss in there <laughs> to be okay. honest. But you know, but it's still, it's Shazam. Have you seen Shazam? I've seen Shazam. It's okay. Dude. That's okay. Okay, that one's that one's okay. Fine, fine. But like, man, um, man, who's the director for Shazam? He's great. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. His his, use, his username is Pony Smashers fifty something like that on on on. He, you don't know? Like, oof, man. Hold I on. know nothing. Oh, I know nothing of Pony Smasher and his <laughs> and his tales on the internet. What is this about? Hold on, hold on. Now that I have good internet, I can just press a button and then I can see David Sandberg. Okay, he's the guy who directed uh-huh. Shazam. He's like, oh man, he's he's from that Nordic country that I I don't know which one. <laughs> what? I'm so... Is it Sweden, Norway? He's from Sweden. Where? He's Sweden. a director he's from, from Sweden. Okay, let's see. What's Shazam? Yeah, and he's he's awesome. You know why? Because why? he used to do he because before he made these big movies, mm-hmm. he used to do YouTube, and oh. he's still doing YouTube. He, he does, and it's he does awesome. Poop? He, yeah, you should, <laughs> Tim. You should just when this podcast is over, you love it. You should just go to his YouTube channel, and he talks okay. about the, 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 the frustrations of directing big movies. And he can he's talking about how they decided to do a certain scene in Shazam that no one would ever talk about, like mm-hmm. on making ofs. Mm. There are all these like unique, and I think it, you wouldn't be surprised, but you would. It would be something you would expect because I think you have enough knowledge of how movies are made. Okay, but it's just it's just really fascinating. He's he, he takes the time off to actually still make YouTube videos about the movies he's made, and that's awesome. I that's think. awesome. No, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. Do 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 your thing, man. Go back to your. What am I talking about? <laughs> I was I don't, I don't like, know what you're talking no, about. I, I was talking about nothing because I was reading his uh, IMDb and I decided to talk. But you know what? 
I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do two things at the same time. <laughs> you can't talk and you can't talk and read it. No, time. no, no. It's, it's, it's this podcast is chill. Um, so yeah, no one I wanted to ask you about. I don't even know what we're talking about. Uh, the movie we're talking about M- Mitchell's versus the machines. Yeah, what, what do you think of and, like overall pod? Uh, yeah, we were talking about that. Well, I mean, it gave me a lot of onward vibes. Onward vibes. The onward, is onward. The Pixar movie. The Remind Pixar movie me. that we forgot in the barren desert of oh, 2020 the, when we were doing those... The, the, yeah. the, the goblins. The goblins, yeah. Yeah, I totally yeah. forgot about that one. <laughs> Speaking of Pixar never gonna <laughs> suck. Yeah, the goblin yeah. movie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the goblin movie. Um, it gave me like that... Look, the plot is just a vehicle to... <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean. Like, it's... At one point, you know where it's going to head. Like, you, you know what's, yeah, what's going to happen. But it's okay, I guess. But does it, but does it matter? Does it matter? Because I, I enjoyed it anyway. And maybe I'm just old and I don't care, but, like, hmm. I still enjoyed watching the characters. I thought yeah, they had a very, very nice dynamic. And I don't know, for me, it was quite touching when we find out that the reason why Katie and her dad really couldn't connect very much is because because she doesn't know that her dad is um like he was always like discouraging her slightly and yeah. not being interested in her movies and her art and wanting to go to college and having trouble connecting with her uh throughout when she was growing up and then she find she finds out that he used to also be like somewhat of an artist he carved a whole his whole forest house and he wanted to live in the forest. Yeah. He couldn't do it. And it was just to protect her because she, he, you know, he was afraid that she would be as disappointed as he was with, um, you know, his, um, dream. And I thought that was, that was really nice. And he finds out that he just didn't pay enough attention to her in general when she was growing up to look at her movies and stuff and encourage her because she was doing great. And I, I really, I really like that. Yeah, I, I, my I, dramatic voice. And I think for me, yeah, I was very emotional for me actually, actually. And if from the perspective oh, of, being, really? of being a father, of a <gasps> daughter, wow. And I think um, it kind of put things into perspective because, you know, I see my daughter. At, you know, she's two right now, and I see her from being a, a you know, a kid and seeing things in the moment right now what's important to her and you know how's her day and you know so she's learning and she's interested but kind of watching this movie and seeing especially that moment when she understands you know what her dad sacrificed or compromised for her sake um and kind of understanding that i i for me perspective was as from a from a dad kind of understanding that this person you know, as a child is, you know, as she is a human, but it's kind of, that's going to keep expanding and they're going to be an adult yeah. at one point. And just kind of seeing it from this perspective of like what I do and how much time I spend and, and just generally seeing like, okay, I need to think about how I'm going to, you know, kind of modify my life around her at this moment and and seeing that everything I do at this point has an effect on what's going to happen in the future. It's not just about this moment. So I know, and that right? was kind of like, whew. Well, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think you can, you know, empathize with that even, even without yes. being a dad, but it's, for me, it's a little, it was a little bit of stronger because I just kind of see it, you know, just a flood of emotions of understanding. Okay. Th- this is this, this little fun, cool creature that I love and I'm hanging out with every day, that's going to be a person one day. And, you know, me and, and her mom are the most important people that is going to affect that right now. So it was, it was crazy, man. It was just like my mind went places of just like, yeah, of thinking. So, wow. so it's very good for, from that perspective, you know, that you could, somebody can kind of empathize with for, from their maybe personal experience as a child, but also as a parent, you could also take something from it from emotionally as far as like, you know, it goes food for yeah. thought. So that's pretty good. I, I it, like that. It, it goes both ways. Um, yeah, it's t- twofold. You would say <laughs> <laughs> twofold indeed. I, I don't know. I don't know when the time will come when you're going to tear up 
when you're watching a movie like this where you see, you know, oh, dude, that was it. balling like, I mean, my the entire, eyes off. I was like, the entire, <laughs> the entire family say goodbye to her when she's <laughs> going to college, you know? I think for like solid right. five minutes, I was like, <laughs> so I guess, watering. so, okay, you're already on that stage that I remember when I was watching. So I was, you know, I was watching TV with my mom uh-huh. uh, way back in like 2002, 2003, mm-hmm. when I was like 14. And we were watching like, I think one of the last episodes of this old TV show uh-huh. called Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <That> is... <laughs> so it's, with it's, the crop. it's with John Ritter. It's with John. Yeah. And the, one of the last, I think one of the last scenes in the film was, you know, the dad seeing his daughter uh, with going out with her friends mm-hmm. uh, soon to leave home. And my mom started crying a lot, you know, and I, and I, and I couldn't relate. And I remember very, very, you know, like I was just like, what? You know, what? Yeah. They're so getting on with their life. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's like an interesting, well, I'm glad to hear that you actually cried too. So that's good. <laughs> so both of us. Two, two so uncles crying over a children movie. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what this podcast yeah. is about. But there's, there's a lot of heart to it, man. I, I like that. And you feel it. You yeah. know that this was made with sincerity. And that's, I think that there's, just like in the movie where she says, she tells, you know, her younger brother, like, don't, you know, what was that? Like, don't live, don't live life, um, you know, hiding your, feelings yeah yeah oh yeah you know. her, her little brother likes the neighbor and he's really having trouble just any kind yeah, of communication yeah, yeah. so i think she gives they him, both love dinosaurs yeah. yeah they both love dinosaurs but um he has trouble like communication because yeah. she's a girl and he's like what 10 11 12 yeah so his bigger sister i i like the sibling dynamic there was no you yeah know, there was no beef. cliche i think we're gone we're out of there we're out of that stupid cliche yeah. where it's like arguing yeah bullying we're out of that hillary duff uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah Lizzie mcguire child being a thing. weirdo spying on his a older sister yeah and even like the you know the parents dynamic like there's a little bit of you know dumb dad syndrome because you can't do technology but i think there's a good you know as far as the plot as far as the story it's it, it's it's mixed when mixed well it's not just like dad dumb can you know emote so I think it's good. There were some good sequences. I think the big one was the <laughs> the Furbies. Oh, that that was that was good. The Furbies were also like realistically ah. shaded, and I think there was yes, a, I love that as a contrast <laughs> to everything yeah, else in the just movie. Like the real Furbies world look Furbies act- attacking yeah. them <laughs> because like all the you know in the movie yeah for people who haven't seen it and want to know. Um, <laughs> it's just the, the, the condescending the voice. <laughs> well, if you didn't watch, you know, I will tell you. <laughs> I'm not naming names. <laughs> um, the, the, like, uh, yeah. So this AI controls all electronics with their Wi-Fi because all of the, you know, all of the, uh, like, most of the electronics that were made now have that, you know, that PAL operating system in it, so they control it. So that oh yeah, everything, so everything up. that's an old, uh, like, it's a smart. Toaster, like smart TV, large. smart fridge, they're all like owned by this company. So when, yeah. when the robots so gross. are attacking everyone, so those things are attacking them as well. Yeah, yeah. It was so gross, man. Do you feel kind of disgusted when you see like mo- like mega co- corporations owning everything do you, in movies? Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit sometimes it's a... Uh, I think this I feel, movie handled sick. it a little bit better. I think it wasn't like technology bad. I, I think I think a little bit, a little bit was nuanced. I think there's... Could have been a little bit more nuanced as well for my taste because there's a scene when the when the dad is talking to the CEO and the CEO is kind of apologizing <laughs> for causing all this mess. But they also kind of hint at, you know, technology doesn't equal bad. Technology kind of gives you power to do a lot worse thing, you know, like technology, like especially for the case of our hero, Katie, she used technology to create her art. She was isolated and she was able to on her computer create all this great art which was a good escapism for her get her emotions out and you know kind of figure herself out and also get applied to the school so in a way technology is good but also in kind of not thinking about it you also create this hell which was these robots taking over so i think it was a little bit it, it understood that point of it it wouldn't didn't go just like yeah corporations that's good evil bad robots. yeah but I, I wasn't thinking yeah I, you completely fair points i was just thinking of like just 
it's kind of like I just feel yucky when I see that, and I feel yucky in the real world. Too. Oh, okay, like just every, too you know. much of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, like, I it's do. It's scary. It's a uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, America by <laughs> and large, is, by and large, it's <laughs> going crazy. Well, the G seven summit, uh, they have all agreed to, to 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 tax these big corporations so they don't jump into you tax sure? havens. That's what they agreed to do. You sure? So we'll see. You see. The, We'll see. We'll see what I don't happens. believe it. I don't I, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> they'll find like the tiniest country, the Isle of Man, and they'll... And they'll... <laughs> the flag of the Isle of Man is great. The foot. Yeah, it's, it's the best. Green. It's a tax haven. Now you know the... <laughs> a... Oh, man. Um, yeah. No, I think it was pretty good. It's a good film. The movie. I, 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 uh, yeah. I mean, like, it's not... In my opinion, it's not Spider-Verse. No. I love Spider-Verse. No, it's not Lego I, Movie. I, it's not Spider-Verse. It's not even maybe rainy chance of meatballs but it's right under there i would say yeah me too i think sincerity i hope i hope to see more like sony pictures animation doing stuff because from all the i think like there's this dark age (laughs) of cg movies like in the 2010s yes don't you agree like it just uh, illumination with despicable me like the first one's fine i didn't watch the the minions uh, onslaught of minions and 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 you know, there's so many European CG movies that were coming out, and they're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I like CG. Um, yeah, no, I think this is a good direction. I think it also shows other studios and creators like you don't have to follow this. You know, this Pixar, DreamWorks copy paste and stuff. It's like you can make your, you can carve your own path with CGI. There's there's no. I think we're gonna see some good stuff. You know, with the with for movie CGI's with the whole you know that big screen that they used on Mandalorian and and stuff I think dude I love that we can talk about that forever yeah I, I, I think that's so like exciting. sparking up some joy and some new direction it's sparking joy for me <laughs> for 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 so movies hopefully like just Tim like just imagine <laughs> imagine like you, you're able to I think so look uh, <laughs> so a friend of mine she helped me move uh, my parents stuff yesterday uh-huh. and we were just discussing about because she does she has like a, like de- decades probably like a whole decade mm-hmm. at least experience of managing concerts for Croatia okay and she has her own independent company to do it oh is this was this the famous person to help us with to get tickets to what was it did she no it was something it was something I remember I remember like saying Tepula for the foos it wasn't I think I yeah or was the foos we were asking about the foos it was some metallic I don't know we needed Jake for this Jake yes. you're missing you're missing yeah. this conversation there was a conversation a long time ago about some tickets <laughs> I think it was metallic yeah, about some or tickets something. somewhere <laughs> we're missing yeah, yeah, the third yeah. It's, person yeah it's her okay. it's her she okay. was like we were, we were we were hanging out talking about this and she was just talking about how she you know has she's starting to look into movies now okay more because because the concert scene has dried up and oh you know, it's the been COVID. A pretty rough year for her <sighs> yeah um and uh she said she has friends who are in in fact like this is interesting like i didn't even know like romania i think she said she told me like serbia romania okay croatia sort of like that's where more and more people are you know making more movies you know I think you might agree. I mean, I haven't seen any, and I don't think... I have I mean, not. Maybe some of them are great. I mean, Serbia but has like, always had, like, a pretty big output on movies, yeah. but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, lots of sorts of movies, but, yeah. Yeah, and um, and she said that, like, there's a group that she knows that they're setting up something where you could, you know, film, like, people virtually and stuff like that. She didn't know the specifics, mm-hmm. but I'm thinking... It, they're, I think they're they're trying to they're trying to do that. That wall, that like the wall space, like 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 the Mandalorian, yeah. the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian wall. We call it that. The Mandalorian wall is amazing, and it's also so running awesome. on just Unreal Engine, which is insane. It's so awesome. I was so excited. I was just thinking, Tim. I don't want to. I don't want to jump the gun here. But the first thing I was thinking of is like, you can make a smaller budget film, and you can put anything you want in it, and you really don't need that many resources anymore. Yeah. Comping and you know like figuring out shots and you know pre-planning all that stuff now you can wing it and dude well it's more I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you what i'm thinking <laughs> but, I, but i wouldn't so say excited wing about it this. more i think it's more of the the difference is more prep because you have to kind of you know decide on everything beforehand so you can you can always adjust it on the fly sure obviously. but the minutiae 
but the minutia is that yes. you want to like if you're if you're there and you're like what can we move the camera yes. a little bit like or move the environment a little bit to the left to the right right but you have to commit because basically it's shot on film like whatever's in the background you shoot that on film so you oh, don't true. put I yourself mean, in that situation old... where you go like but that oh we'll green screen it and then we'll fix it in the end and then you're like you can't fix it because you can't make it work like you have to make it work in camera with this which is amazing i know but i know but that's how they did it before green screen yep you know yeah it's exactly so, that i don't you have to decide like, on i don't the know day. what that's great yeah and happy accidents. I think, Tim, me and you, we listen to the, the Roger Deakins t- podcast, and he says the same thing. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, you do it on the day. Whatever decision you make, you make it. It's done. You can't change it. Live with it. Yeah. Happy accidents. Yeah, that's great. It g- gives an organic f- feel to even like a big CGI, you know, world of, of, you know, science fiction. You still get that little bit of, you know, human touch to it, which is probably like why people, you know still love the original star wars because it does have that feeling it's not so surgical like the 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 <laughs> prequels even though they have their own happy mistakes just like jar jar Binks. I love their happy mistakes yeah um their happy mistakes are great oh uh, we can talk about the we can about talk about the mandalorian screen i think i think um taika waititi is using it for um the new thor movie so whenever we, we get to everybody that everybody needs to use we it can re- everybody needs to use it because like Every director that was better. on The Mandalorian on the show is using it for their movies. They're like, yes, <laughs> good, good, good. Let's keep doing. I want this. I want this to be a thing, and then I want you know, I want uh, the technology to trickle down to smaller companies that yeah. can try to do the same thing. And I also want those screens to get better because I don't know about you, Tim, but I was watching The Mandalorian, and when I was watching it, there's a set like maybe it's intentional, but the cinematography little dim, and I always felt like oh. that. Maybe the maybe the LCD screen, like the LED screens, mm-hmm. aren't bright enough for that. Because I was I was thinking like it's beautiful seeing, it's beautiful seeing the sunsets. You know, it's beautiful yes. seeing the overcast weather. But for the bright how bright daylight, right? Exactly. How good are you, how are you gonna do the desert? You know, how mm. are you gonna make it look like sun is piercing through the sky? You know, we'll have to I don't see. Know. Yeah, I think yeah they they can bring in like additional lights and blast it on 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 the subjects, but sure. yeah. And then over kind of explode. is it bright enough? Is the LED screen? Bright I don't know. Enough? I don't know. I think they have a second version for the. They had a second version for the Mandalorian season two, and now for the movies, they're they're doing even even better. I think the only thing about that screen is like I would love to see it in real life because basically it changes. The thing is that it's in order to make sense, the screen changes with the movement of the camera. They're both mm-hmm. linked. So you have that parallax effect because otherwise it's a screen. You wouldn't get the dimension. So the screen kind of changes. I wonder, really wonder if the actors, it kind of messes with them because as the camera oh, man, moves, your thing. background goes all nuts as well. So I really wonder if, you know, maybe at one point, this is great, but then they'll be like, it's just making me want to vomit, you know, <laughs> do like a really true. spin, really fast spin. Because like, if you see it from the behind the scenes, like your background is going nuts, but you know, maybe that's, that's the mm-hmm. worth it. I noticed that. I don't know. It's exciting though. It's really exciting. Yeah. Very exciting times. One thing you never know. You know, you think technology has peaked and then and then something comes out and you're like And then this happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's yeah. that's cool. I th- I think I think yeah. that's uh I don't know. I think that's all I want to talk about the Mitchells. Oh man. Ah. Oh, is this it? This is our this is after our two weeks that we have to leave and go away for two oh, yeah, weeks. Yeah, we have to we'll leave back. back into our holes. We must crawl in. <laughs> And uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, t- t- chat would say this on. Hey, okay. So here's two things. Two things to the okay, audience. Okay, tell me the two things. Tell me. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it's. I was excited. It's a question for you as well, I guess. Uh, two things for the audience. For those who are listening, are you interested, or do you use Discord? And uh, do you want to? You know, maybe we can start ah. a Discord chat chat room where we can talk about these movies. We. We uh, s- review slash talk about. Um, I don't know. You know, we're trying to get some to get some folks in here for some interaction. Yeah. So it's not just me and, be a good idea. me and Phil because it's you know it's, it's down to three to two. It's you can be the we can yeah. be Jake. All of you. <laughs> yes, all of you are Jake. <laughs> all of you will be. We'll rename you in Discord. Every single one of you to Jake. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, you let us know on Instagram or Two Full Podcast. Let us know if you use yeah, Discord yeah. and you want to maybe let us. Let us know. Let us. And um, secondly, let us know. Um, this one's a bit of a interesting, but you know, this is transparency. We, we, you know, we, we're 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 not professional. We're 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 just chilling here. Um, Apple Podcast yeah. announced this special like subscriber version of the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're essentially. It's we could have either episodes or a show um, on this new channel that we're going to create that's kind of encompassing, you know, both the old Phil and Jake and conversation, the Matrix Minute and this podcast that will be only subscribers to it. Now, we don't really make any money out of this, huh. actually. We we don't from this podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. But there are some expenses to as far as like. You know, having a domain, paying for the uh, for the provider of the podcast, and there's a bunch of other stuff that goes into this. We just kind of happily pay out of our pocket. It's no problem. But um, we're not really looking into making money out of this, but we're thinking maybe if we create like a subscriber version mm-hmm, where it's mm-hmm, like special mm-hmm. episodes, like we want to talk about the music of the MCU, maybe bring some old guests or maybe some make some wacky episodes completely off topic. Would anyone be interested in that? That's a good question. And how much would you be interested in paying monthly? <laughs> how much would you be interested in How much in would paying? you pay monthly for an extra one or two episodes from us? Um, yeah, that's an interesting, interesting thing. Yeah. We need, to, we need to work on that. We need to work on that. So, yeah, we're just asking. Go to our Instagram and just DM us. You know, tell us. Tell us what do you think of these things. Tell us. Tell us now. And and we'll decide upon your things because, you know, we're, we're just chilling here. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Oh, yeah. Is, aren't they making a show with uh, old Gregory? <laughs> What's his name? Yeah, okay. <laughs> What's his name? Oh, I could talk to you about old Gregory. So I had this idea. I wanted to make the Obi-Wan movie mm-hmm. way back in like 20. 13 2012 mm-hmm. because i thought first of all i didn't think it would be a good idea but then i heard disney bought star wars see that's the thing before <laughs> disney bought star wars yeah. i thought star wars was done you know forever it's over it's over yeah it's done it's a point in time where we're gone if this i think star wars the movies at least live with george and yeah if george says no no, then no. Uh, i think we were all fine i remember man 2011 i was on the star wars uh message boards uh this was a message board this was a message board for particularly for like preserving the original films okay because that's still a thing um and of course there's also like a lot of uh, other topics like people making their own fan edits and re- preservations yeah. which is how i found a lot of like like i found the matrix work print that oh, i yes. didn't get yet but i've heard about it you know there's oh, stuff like that's, that that's that's for the podcast we need to get that one i know i know um and back in 2011, it was like, I felt like, yeah, Star Wars, that's it. You know, that, that's it. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing new, you know. Um, and I was happy to let it be, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then all hell broke loose, you know. <laughs> 2012 <laughs> happened. Bob Eager and George Lucas shook hands. And uh, then we we have this nightmare <laughs> that we it's on pause right now. Star Wars, it's it's, it's pause. Yeah, because they failed. But like, um, <laughs> but um, one of the things that made me interested was then okay, if there's opportunities, I'm kind of I'm starting to I'm starting to <laughs> think started of, like, emailing Bob a, Iger. It's like man, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I started I started thinking like, what would be interesting? Well, well, Ewan McGregor is turning into like he's getting older every time. In the prequels, it's been like five, ten years already mm-hmm. since. The last movie, not yet ten years, but yeah, it was ten years. Sorry, over ten years, and um, and then I watched uh, Akira Kurosawa's uh, Sanjuro. I did not again. see that. Yojimbo, Yojimbo is oh, the okay. first one. Sanjuro is the second one. But dude, you should watch Yojimbo. It's a great like mm-hmm. you can like this came out in the fifties, I think late fifties, and. You you can see a lot of influences. So you watch the movie. I I, I dare you to watch okay. Yojimbo. Well, it was you like, watch it and you'll see. Yeah, the westerns what? of of the, like the 1670s were really inspired by yeah. Kurosawa. So exactly, exactly. So like, if you watch it, you'll be like, "This is like fistful of dollars." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is like so and so and so and so. And and I watched it and I was like, "That's how you do an Obi Wan movie." Mm. Um, and I thought. 
and then I then I thought of like his like because in the Star Wars prequels because we want to tie that in because it's a George thing you know he, George Lucas did it we'll put them <laughs> up. Um, yeah like you tie it in and Qui Gon it was like the first Jedi to figure out how to become a ghost oh you can have Qui Gon in there and be like training him and not training him I thought it would be great that because the Empire rose up from you know from the Jedi's negligence mm-hmm. that Obi Wan now look at him you know it's like he used to be a Jedi Knight, commander of the clone ar- of some of the clone armies, trainer, you know, <laughs> yeah. like owing a debt to his old master who he loved, and he loved Anakin. But look at Anakin now, you know, he's failed. He's the second hand. Yeah, he's the se- he's the right hand of the devil, and so he has Obi Wan would have such a crappy time on a desert planet, and you know, sure he says yes, I'll protect Luke because he's our only hope. Yeah. But that's the only I mean, thing he has. There is to another when his life he feels a failure. Yeah. But but then but this would have been a great like movie you could make where he just struggles with that. He like at one point in the movie he could just be like, I don't care about this crap. Like, what am I doing here? And then it can be like Yojimbo because Yojimbo the character I don't know what his name is, but like the character played by uh, Toshiro Bifune, mm-hmm. I think his name is. He's a pretty, he's like, I think the most famous classic, like, Japanese actor. Um, he had, he, you know, because in that, in, in, uh, Yojimbo, he is basically a samurai that isn't a samurai anymore, you know? Okay. He's just like, I'm a, like, I'm like a, I'm like a guy who just does stuff for money. Retired Jedi. He's, he's no longer. Yeah. He goes, he goes into a village. Village has a problem. And he's, and then this, <laughs> Are you, you know, talking about the Mandalorian? <laughs> Well, see, that's the other yeah. thing. Then they made the Mandalorian, and I was like, "Man, this is kind of like what I wanted." Uh-huh. With, uh, and so, like, to make it brief, it would be like that. It would just be like him helping a town and on Tatooine without a lightsaber because Jedi aren't supposed to be in hiding, right? Yeah, so he would, he would reveal himself then. Figure out. He's, yeah, he's so do, he like, would have to Jedi do something tricks else. secretly behind the table. Something, some, something like that, you know. And also be, and then also have arguments with ghost Qui-Gon every single time. Not with not that not that Qui Gon <laughs> would argue with him, but Qui Gon Yeah, yeah, I know. But I you know what I mean? Like Qui Gon would be like having conversations with him and he would just be like, it's the will of the force. And then like, you know, like Obi Wan's like, shut up with your force, you know? Like I think that would have been interesting. And then in the end, of course, he comes to terms with it and he becomes the the man the hermit who we all love. The old yes, man exactly. the fool. So, yeah. And that would be this touching moment in the end. Because they then there would be this conflict with Lars, Farmer Lars. Oh, they, they'll be Owen. like, an, oh, I guess he knows of old Ben. I guess he, Yeah, he knows of old Ben. So I think that's the perfect opportunity to be like, let me see the boy. Ben. No. <laughs> yeah, he, no. You, you just get away from this family. You know, stuff like I think <laughs> what that. What is it, Harrison been. Ford with his finger pointing? <laughs> just you get, get, away get away from, from my family <laughs> and that boy. You, you know what I mean? I think there was, there's some interesting things in there. but And it all takes place on Tatooine. It's not flashy. There's aliens. There's all that stuff. But it's not. It's only we're constrained to the story that we have. What are they making? And, are they making a movie or a show? I don't know. They're making a show. They're making a show? And Obi-Wan's going to be. Yeah. And Obi-Wan's probably going to go on some space adventures. Mm, I think and that's all kinds of. And I heard Darth Vader was going to be in it, even though he shouldn't be because they haven't met since. Mm. you know before. it's we'll see we'll uh, see what happens i think it, anyway i think it's better as i sh- gave it up <laughs> <laughs> that's okay <laughs> of course you know what can you do you're, you're not in with cahoots Tossed with, it in the with, air with, uh, no, with, the, with the disney I'm so not. but i'm not and it's also not it's not a developed thing it was just you know okay. me thinking about it you know daydreaming and it was fun. Oh, it's good you know sometimes you gotta i we'll see we'll see what happens i think if it's a show it might work better because i think one thing i worry when you have these in between um you know, like the the events of the prequels are huge for old Ben, and then the end is is, is huge for him as far as story and plot and whatever some kind of. And then you kind of he's like sitting in this desert. You don't want to overshadow whatever happened before and after, and then for a movie, exactly. you kind of have to that, have that's... a big event. Otherwise, it's not really worth, especially a Star Wars movie that comes out that millions of people watch. Watch, you have to have some kind of big event that kind of undermines whatever happened before and after. So, a show I mean, like, might be better. That's what the studios would say for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think a show might be better because you can keep it smaller, unless they yeah. do season two and they just like ruin it. <laughs> they just jump just the go, shark. Just go hog wild. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, I mean, that's exa- This is exactly what I learned about 
I know we're we're kind of over time right now, but this is exactly what I've learned about film to politics, mm-hmm. just reading books and stuff. It's like the bigger that thing is, the harder you're gonna have a time try to do what you want, and eventually you're gonna have to compromise. Yeah, and it it, it depends on how clever you are with compromising that will make you get what you want but that's a whole different game yeah right? that's like <laughs> that, that, there's nothing to do that's with an interesting skill. game i think the, the the funnest way to deal with that i've heard people do they will think of something a lot more outrageous than they what they want to do get that shut down <laughs> and then what they wanted to do initially that's the compromise i've heard this like with south park i've heard this with like yeah. ratings i've heard it with people with ideas it's like that's a sound strategy so if you're trying to get a movie out there that's a little bit and and for some reason you're listening to the, this podcast and you're developing a movie for a major studio, I know, right? By any chance, <laughs> just give them something a lot more crazier than uh, watch out. They might approve it, and then you're kind of screwed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a, apparently it's a good strategy. So yeah, it is. It is. That's why Peter Jackson had the advantage of making Lord of the Rings in New Zealand, where no one could really call him. <laughs> bothering <laughs> the, 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 it's stuff like that these weird mind games yeah. you have to do strange insane anyway yeah i would love to talk about that more but i think we're out of time we're yeah let's we're not good yeah let's not bore our let's go listeners. i think we did good i think it was a good podcast johnny we got a thumbs like up from johnny so i think we're good johnny hey buddy yeah um he's yes he's 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 he's, he's pointing at the play for the theme song so he's playing it right now so, yeah so, yeah uh, he's playing it playing it Anyway, Tim, have a good two weeks. Yeah. Have a good two weeks of June, and then we'll see each other on June. What was it? I don't know. June what? June. July? No, June. Wait, we're still in the, June. Before the music. Yeah, we're still in June. It's going to be the 20th of June. Yeah. D- d- don't worry. Holy crap. We're going to figure That's some incredible. stuff out. That's incredible. <laughs> Bill has moved in. We're going to standardize some things. We're a little bit, you know. We're, 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 it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be I'm mobile. Mobile Phil. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, Chirio, and uh, congratulations to Jake Ch- and Paul Chirio. again. Yes. To your health and the baby's health. Um, so, who, yes. we will watch it like old oh, Ben. Obi Wan. <laughs> oh, like old Ben, we'll watch it from the cliffs as it grows yeah, yeah, into yeah. a boy. A strapping young lad. A strapping young lad. All righty then. Bye, boy. Goodbye. Goodbye.